Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're gonna talk about how to help your students build career readiness competencies. If at any time you can't see what I think you're seeing or you can't see me, please let me know. I have my configuration a little different today, which is slightly unnerving. All right, so I thought I would start with some introductions. My name is Brianna Randall. I recognize a lot of the names in the chat, um, so good to see you. And for those of you who haven't been to a session um, hosted by me or somebody else in the Career and Internship Center, welcome. My name is Brianna. I serve as the Executive Director in the Career and Internship Center. We're the centralized center in Mary Gates Hall, serving the vast majority of undergrads and grad students on campus. Um, also with us today, we might have Wendy. She is our career technologies manager. That's a new role as of April. So she's managing Handshake and a lot of the platforms, such as one of the ones I'll show you today. And one thing that will feature, um, be featured in today's session is the National Association of Colleges and Employers, NACE. And um, it's so part of our world that uh, I just kept saying nays. I'm like, you might not know what it is. So it is our national association. It is career centers and colleges and companies and recruiters who hire new college talent. We come together to inform each other's work, talk about trends, that sort of thing. Um, and they do some benchmarking and some surveys. Right. We're gonna cover the why, uh, why this topic why it's important, a brief history of our work along the career readiness competencies um, area. Then we'll dig into the current competencies. Uh, I have a slide of resources for students and a slide of resources for you. Then we'll dig into a new online inventory that your students can use to assess um, their level of career readiness competency. And then we'll talk about ideas for implementation. So our why is that a college degree is rarely sufficient in and of itself. Um, we're graduating a lot of college graduates and um, they need to be able to show that they have some skills, some competencies that employers are looking for and generally that they have developed those through certain experiences. Also, I will say that employers typically don't rate students as skilled in these areas as students rate themselves. That might not be surprising to you. And students really need to be intentional in cultivating and articulating these experiences and skills. So when somebody asks me, you know, what keeps you, what, you know, keeps you going, I have been here a while. Um, I really feel passionate about helping students develop the skills, experiences, and relationships to be successful after they graduate. So we've been doing work in the career readiness competency area for a bit. Our National Association, NACE, adopted a, their first list in 2017. It was um, a lot of research, a lot of discussions with employers, a lot of iterations. We liked them but didn't love them. So we launched our own slightly different version called Level Up, Build Skills Employers 1 in 2019. Then we brought LinkedIn Learning into campus in 2020 to help students build those skills. And it worked out really well that it was during the pandemic when it was sometimes hard to find experience and other ways to build skills. We launched our, what was then called our Build Skills page in 2021. Then NACE uh, revised their competencies and started producing materials for universities to use, which is why current day, we decided to sunset our level up initiative and adopt the NACE competencies as is. They are producing things that we can use that I don't have to produce on our own since we don't really have anybody uh, full time to do those sorts of things. So then we renamed our build skills page to build career readiness competencies. And we purchased the career readiness plus inventory, which I'll talk about. Uh, we've only had it on our website. Um, few weeks actually. So what are the competencies? And I will say again, the list of eight competencies have um, been 
much discussed by career center directors and employers, many iterations, and even one of the definitions has slightly tweaked between some of the different materials they've produced. So um, career and self-development, I believe in the previous version, this might've been self-management or career management. Proactively really developing yourself, learning, being aware of your strengths and limitations, navigating opportunities, networking, those sorts of things. Communication, this has been on the list, one of the top few competencies uh, the entire time I worked in the center, which is 20 years, will not surprise you. Clearly and effectively exchanging, I, I mean, it's ideas and facts and perspectives with all different types of people. Critical thinking, again, this has never wavered. It's um, very important to employers. I think the idea of critical thinking, kind of like communication, is very big. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. Here's the definition that NACE puts out, identifying and responding to needs based on an understanding of situational context and logical analysis. I will say sometimes I think this is a challenge for a lot of us. Equity and inclusion, this is the definition that is slightly different in different versions. Uh, demonstrate the awareness, attitude, knowledge, and skills required to equitably engage and include people from different cultures. Engage in anti-racist practices that actively challenge the system, structures, and policies of racism. So those are the first four. As a reminder, let's see if I can remember career and self-development, communication, critical thinking, and equity and inclusion. These are just an alphabetical order. Later, I'll show you, I believe, uh, level of importance to employers. And I might have to move a little bit as we have sun coming through my windows. I shouldn't complain. The sun is probably limited at this point in the season. Leadership. Recognize and capitalize on personal and team strengths to achieve organizational goals. I will say this is one of the ones that I didn't love in the original version and I still don't love it. The reason is I think what students view as leadership and what employers view as leadership is different. Um, I think if a new college grad tries to go in and say, I'm a really great leader because I did these things and therefore I should be able to have a leadership role in this organization that's going to fall really flat. I want them to showcase the things they, the skills that are part of being a leader. That's where I see a mismatch sometimes. Professionalism, and this word is pretty loaded. Uh, I was a little bit surprised to see that it was retained, but knowing work environments differ greatly, understand and demonstrate effective work habits and act in the interest of the larger community and the workplace. I think it's understanding the context um, and not just acting in your own best interest in the workplace. And then the last two, teamwork and technology, build and maintain collaborative relationships to work effectively toward common goals. Also appreciating the diverse viewpoints within a team. And then technology, this is, this is the skill that uh, Employers tend to rate students more competent in this area than the students rate themselves. Understand and leverage technologies ethically to enhance efficiencies and do things. Within the technology space, this is pretty vague. And, you know, the words AI, for example, data science aren't included. And that's because probably the, the volunteers on the NACE committee do not want to revise these every time something is um, really new and innovative in the tech space. Um, so there you go. So those are the eight competencies. And then, oops. This is a NACE survey that they do every year of employers. And the importance versus the proficiency on career readiness competencies. So this is employers who hire new college grads, kind of rating new college grads in the workplace. Um, the lighter yellow is how important employers think 
this competency is. And so you will see they are in order. And then the orange is how proficient they think graduates are in these areas. You will see there, like I said, they, um, this is a little bit different than what I said, but they think college students are real good in technology. Um, there's a pretty big gap in some of them, like communication, critical thinking, professionalism. Um, so that's why we're, we're really trying to um, bring this up, help students understand the importance of it and help them figure out how they can further develop and articulate. It's not enough to have these skills. You have to be able to convince an employer that you have the resumes, cover letters, career fairs, interviews, those sorts of things. All right, so that is the, the basics and you can learn more in some of the resources I'll show you. I am going to come back to this page um, to make sure we have time. So we do have a page called Build Career Readiness Competencies. It's from the Career Planning drop-down menu on our website. I'll send you the link. Um, it has definitions and sample behaviors. So in addition to just that little two sentence description of each one, it has bullet points of what are some, some behaviors that might indicate that you have this competency. Um, and the answer is yes, I will send the slides and the recording um, and all the resources, it's already drafted. Um, there's also, well, I take it back. Okay. Let me stop share and share my other monitor. Can you all see our website? I can't see any of you. Yes, okay, cool, cool. So this is our website, careers.uw.edu. Under career planning, these are the six buckets that we want students to be thinking about, sort of in linear fashion, but career development is rarely linear. Build career readiness competencies. Um, here, what you'll find as a baseline is all the different skills that we just talked about. Then we have some resources. I'll talk about this in a second. This is a reflection worksheet where students can think about how they've already developed in these areas and how they could continue to develop in these areas. And this is more of a self-assessment self tool. I'm going to show you this digital version in a minute, but this is like a, a paper and pencil kind. These are descriptions and behaviors if you want to dig in a little bit more yourself or you think um, students would be interested. And then here are a couple of tools that I think are really good for people to use to further develop their skills and really just explore skills too. Like, um, I think I might want to go down this career path. This skill is important to it. Let's tinker with it and see if I actually think that is an interesting thing and something I could be competent at. Okay. Surely there's a better way to do this, but I don't know how, so we're gonna go with this. Okay, so those are some resources for students. And I want to let you know, hopefully you can see the slide again. If not, somebody let me know. Um, so like I said, Nate, and some of the resources on that website, Nate's produced, yay. Uh, one of them we did. Thank you, Alondra. NACE has also produced some things that might be helpful for you if you want to further coach students in these areas. One is a PowerPoint slide deck. So each competency has a slide and it talks about what it is and the sample behavior. So if you want to give a whole presentation on it, feel free. And it's available in widescreen and standard screen. And then there's an eight and a half by 11 poster that you could hang. You could put in a little acrylic sign holder, whatever you'd like to do. And then there are icons. So each competency has, you know, a little picture that goes along with it. And those are provided in a lot of different ways if you are better than me and know how to use those well. 
<laughs> so those are available. And I will include the slide decks and the posters in our follow-up email. If you want the icons, let me know. Okay, so we've been through the basics and I wanna have time to go through our new inventory. And this inventory is available to uh, students on all three campuses. They're all contributing to the fee of this. So this is an inventory that is, um, was created by a vendor called Career Launch. And then they partnered with NACE and they had a previous assessment and they switched gears a little bit and then offered this um, to specifically align with the NACE competencies. But it also, in, we paid for the plus version, it also includes questions along social capital, career mobility, and life design. So I'll show you in a minute what those mean. There's three to five questions, it might be even, I think there's one that has five, but most of them are three questions and it should take less than five minutes. I'll show you what it looks like in a second. So you'll know what your students are getting themselves into. I decided not to show it live because I thought I might get, go too far. So here's what is meant by those other three areas. Social capital or relationship building, personal and professional connections, relationships and networks, and people's access to and ability to mobilize the human connections to further their potential and their goals. Okay. Life design, um, a lot of you may have heard about this. Um, it's been kind of a popular, I don't even know what to call it, um, out of Stanford for the past 10, 20 years. The mindsets and best practices for taking a design thinking approach to creating a career in life that is meaningful and fulfilling. Okay, so it's kind of continuing to reflect and refine and test things out for yourself. And career mobility is the steps you can take during college to increase the likelihood of career satisfaction and economic mobility, which is moving into maybe a financial um, level that is higher than the family that in which you grew up. So previous research by Career Launch as a vendor had shown that these are important, and so we wanted to keep this on the assessment as well or inventory. Okay, so here is an example of what you would find in the inventory. This is teamwork. This one has three questions. Um, it gives a little definition. If you click here, it will give you a little bit more information about what is meant by this. And you just select one of these. And they go from, I mean, this is not applicable, but I, I consistently do this. I sometimes do this. I kind of understand how this is. And I'm like, I'm pretty, pretty new to, uh, to this concept. Okay, so they would progress through the eight competencies and the three other areas, social mobility, no, social capital, uh, career mobility, and life design mindsets. Um, they would answer these three, then go to the next page. It's really, it's really a slick platform. Okay, so their, their results will pop up on the screen almost automatically, which is really cool. And then they also are sent an email and we got to customize the email. This is what it looks like uh, for Seattle students. Bothell and Tacoma did their own. So they would click on this link. They would get their assessment results that they can download and they could show you. They could print whatever they might want to do. And then we do link to our page and to a couple of the resources that we think would be helpful for them. Like I said, they're shown immediately and sent via email and it uses a rating system from emerging knowledge is kind of an order of those answer choices I showed you to advanced. And for each section, it provides ideas for further development of that competency area. Right now, those are all generic. They're not specific to UW. We might have, we have the possibility to customize the, the suggestions. We wanted to get this launched before we had time to do that. So right now they're just sort of generic. So this is my, I just took the questions. Uh, I took the assessment. And so I must have 
you know, answered a lot of things on the middle tube. So it gives you one breakdown by skill level. So I had six of them in understanding and five of them in early application. It also gives you a comparison. So on the left-hand side is what employers deem as most important. So those are the areas in the order that I showed you earlier. And then how you rated yourself. So I could look at me like, okay, they really like communication and I'm middle of the road. I probably need to figure out how to improve those skills and how to articulate that I have those skills. Same with teamwork. Oh, goodness. Maybe I need to um, volunteer for some more team projects or, um, you know, be on a, a leadership team that's producing some kind of thing that we all work together as a team, those sorts of things. I will say I do like the language that's in the report that really talks about not taking assessments with a grain of salt, but it, it the language is very developmental and um I have I have liked how they have approached talking about results with the students. Um, and so here's an example or two different examples of the report. For communication, I scored middle of the road. For career and self-development, I scored a little higher based on how I answered. So it gives you a little dashboard. I like the words, you're on the right path, keep going. Um, it tends to be pretty positive. And then yes, it talks about some, some ideas that students could use to develop in those areas. Okay, I am gonna pull something up real quick. So for you, I would highly encourage that you are directing students to our Build Career Readiness Competencies page. That's where all the resources that are student facing can be found. And this is the direct link to the Career Readiness Inventory. Um, it is linked. I'm hesitating. It is not linked to single sign on. So they will use their e UW email address to get in, but. Um, and they'll select which campus they're on. And then they'll take the assessment. There are some demographic questions at the end so that NACE can do some national benchmarking. Um, I will, in the follow-up, send you the poster if you wanted to hang it up. If you do not have a color printer, um, I'm happy to print one for you. We do have a color Xerox here, Rico. Um, and then also for those of you who teach courses, we do have a website um, for staff and faculty. And on that website will be the recording of this webinar. But um, also we have a, a tile that's called integrating career with curriculum. And we have tried to put a lot of different ideas in there from, uh, you know, just mention us in the syllabus somewhere to talk about which competencies you think they're gonna develop in this course to having an assignment that really focuses on developing and articulating one of the competencies. So all different levels of commitment and time because we we know teaching courses is, is hard already. This is an extra ask. And so we tried to give you as many ideas and hopefully some of them feel doable. Right, so that is all I have planned for you. So the d downside about the web, we use webinar rather than meeting because it sends you automatic reminders and there are some features of webinars that are helpful, but I don't like that it's not as interactive. If you have a question, please put it in the chat. I do not have Q and A, um, put it in the chat, let me know. Let me, two things. If you have a question for me, put it in the chat. If you were successfully using Level Up and you want to suggest ideas to other people, like how have you integrated this into your department or with your students, with your class, feel free to type that in the chat too. Um, and I'm happy to take ideas. Also, I'll try to remember to include this in the follow-up email. 
if there is an additional resource that we could create or I could try to find from NACE, that would make your job of stating and sharing these competencies easier, please let me know. We literally got one done yesterday. <laughs> um, and one of them, you know, the inventory went up a few weeks ago. So we're we're not done with this work and we're happy to take it. a great question um oh that's a okay two questions renee um probably on the nace website i'm guessing but it would also it would, there was survey and just a lot of intense focus group work with employers but we can try to find that for you I will say NACE tends to be on the more corporate side than there are government and there are nonprofit members, but it's a little more businessy and it's national. So sometimes when they come out with surveys, we we think about how it applies here in the Pacific Northwest and um, on our type of campus. Uh, James, I'm not going to forget about you. I want to answer Karen's first. Yes, you can take the assessment more than one time. Yeah, so it is meant to be, I think it's called iterative, formative. So the goal is you could take it maybe in your incoming year. It's, I think this is really, first year might be a little too much, um, but sophomore definitely. Um, and you could take it again to see if your perception of your skill and your skill slash confidence has gone up. Yeah. So James, I would like to see and hear examples of how this information was implemented when supervising students. Let me, I'm going to pull up another website and then hopefully I remember to sh share my screen after I get that done. So I want to, I don't know how to sh switch screens, so I'll just start over. Okay, so we do have um, a couple of versions that you might be interested in on our website in a different part, and I'll try to remember to include that in the email. So we have a whole section of our website that is for employers, and that includes people on campus who supervise student employees, people who supervise interns. Um, Within that, we have a section on creating an internship. And within that, we have managing interns. And bless their heart, Eli on our team. We used to have an intern eval based on level up, and now we have one based on the NACE competencies. Um, so is it there anymore? Hopefully you can see this. Um, this is just a way for students to rate themselves. And there's also a manager version on that website. So people could, the managers could also use it and they could see how the students and the managers uh, compare. Okay, so would you say that employers are looking to more how students are able to talk about how classwork related to building communication skills rather than saying, for example, that they've done X number of presentations? Oh, that's a great question. I personally think quantif quantities, quantifying things can be helpful, right? They've given this many presentations, but also the diversity of the types of presentations and the links and the audiences. So trying to capture that I, I've given, you know, short PowerPoint slide deck presentations that are required for all the assignments for nine classes. It's um, really the depth and breadth. And I will say they will, the number one experience they look for is internship experience. Um, so that 
they feel more confident that students know how to communicate in a work setting. Um, communication to please a professor can be different than communication to please a supervisor. Hope that answers a little bit. Okay, we're at 401, so I need to wrap up here. As soon as, maybe today, but probably tomorrow, because the video has to you know, do its thing to finish recording, I will send out a follow-up announcement to all of the people who are in attendance and who registered. And then if you have any follow-up questions, please do let me know. And if you have ideas, please let me know. Again, we're just sort of in the, the launch phase of this new set of career readiness competencies. Thank you all for coming. And I hope you have a really good evening. Bye.